Hi, this is Dr. Sweeney, and I am going to be talking a bit about section 2.3. It's on functions, and this particular video is going to be on functions with some definitions and examples. We'll also have another video, a second video, to go over two very special functions, what are called the floor and ceiling functions. And so, consequently, you can take a look at those as well. They're actually really important for computer science. All right, so let's kind of define some things. A function here is from a set A to B is an assignment of exactly one element of B to one element in A. Okay, so if A belongs to A, and so if A belongs to A and B belongs to B, we'll write f of A equals B. And in some cases, we'll call a function or a mapping or a transformation. How you're generally going to see it is you're going to see it looking something like this. F, our function, and then we'll have two semicolons, or a colon, excuse me, and it'll go from A to B. Okay. The set A is called the domain of F, and the set B is called the codomain of F. So those are the special uh, special titles that we use. All right. And what we look at is we look at it. What we're going to do is we're going to draw some circles to demonstrate the mapping. Okay. All right. So here's F, and F is that mapping, the transformation of the function, A will be over on the left hand side will be the domain of F and B will be the codomain of F. Generally, we're going to be thinking about our function as mapping from A into B in that direction, but we can also imagine a function that goes from B to A. But just in general, uh, for the sake of notation, we're going to say that A goes, uh, we map F from A to B, and so it's going to go in this direction. Okay? A an element A, we'll take a little A here, okay, and it'll go over into B. Now A, this element in A, is called the, the um, pre-image of B. That is, is because it comes before B, and B will then be called the image of A, okay? So here's an image, this is the image of A. And this guy right here, he's the pre-image of B. and they're connected via the function. Generally, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say f of a equals b, okay? And that actually defines mathematically for us how we write our function and their relationships. Now, here's the thing. We don't actually have to have all of the images of the set a, okay, be all of the codomain b. We can actually imagine that there's just a subset. There's a subset of B that all of our uh, pre-images map to. Okay, so like we have A1 here, A2 here, A4, right, goes in here somewhere. I can call that uh, B2, this goes to B4, so on and so on and so forth. And then there might be some elements here in B in our codomain, uh, call it C, all right, that are not actually in the range. So the range is, is a subset and it's defined specifically as all of the um, images of all of the elements in A, all right? And we're gonna look at a couple of examples that'll demonstrate um, how, uh, how, how this particular definition works. It'll become really important when we start talking about things like one-to-one -one and on-to. Okay, so let's take a look at some examples and see how functions work. Okay, let's imagine that we have F and this will go from the real numbers, R, onto the real numbers, R, all right? And you've probably seen this instead of your pre-calculus class, something like f of x equals 3x plus 7. From a definition standpoint, that means that any time that I have a value for x, what I'm going to do is multiply that value by 3 and then add 7 to it. So, for example, if I imagine my mapping, let's say I have 1. Now, 1, under the map, is f of 1 will equal 3 times 1 plus 7, which equals 10. So 1 maps onto 10. Okay? If I take, uh, say, for example, 0, 0 is going to be f of 0 equals 3 times 0 plus 7, and that'll end up being 7. So 0 maps onto 7. If I take, for example, one half, then f of one half 
will equal 3 times 1 half plus 7, which is 3 halves plus 7, which equals 8 and 1 half, which is means that 1 half maps to 8 and 1 half. Then, let's say, for example, I take negative 5, f of negative 5 is going to equal 3 times negative 5 plus 7, which equals negative 8. And so negative 5 maps onto negative 8. We can do this with every single real valued element. Okay. Um, in fact, when we talk about restrictions on the domain a little bit later, you'll notice that I can multiply any real number by 3 and add 7 to it, and I'm just fine. There's no problems with that particular uh, mapping. And so consequently, my domain is R. I imagine I have, here's my domain R. Okay, I map my function F here, okay, over again to R. And the question is, is there anything, we have two questions, okay? The first question is, is there any element in R that makes F undefined? That's my first question. And then my second question is, is there any element in R that cannot be mapped to? And that's the question of whether or not there are any what we call restrictions on our domain and what exactly is the range? So we're gonna ask those two questions. So the first question, this first question here, is what are the restrictions to the domain? And so let's take a look at our mapping. f of x equals 3x plus 7. Well, any real number can be multiplied by 3, and any real number can be uh, have 7 added to it. So consequently, we say no restrictions on the domain. All right, and I'll actually make another video in order to talk about the specifics of the restrictions of the domain. But most of you probably know them for your pre-calculus class. Secondly, the second question is, what is the range? We can actually determine the range algebraically. And the way that we do that is we're going to say we'll let y be all the elements in the codomain. Okay, y equal to 3x plus 7. And the question is, is will there be any elements that will actually have us uh, where we can't get to? Okay, that we actually can't solve. All right. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to solve for x. All right. So first, I'll take y minus 7 will equal 3x, and then y minus 7 divided by 3 equals x, okay? And so what this tells me is it tells me that for every y that I choose, I choose an arbitrary y, it's an arbitrary y, I can find an x to go with it. Okay? So our x's, right, those are all our pre-images. And our y's, those are all our images. So by actually going in, taking my original function, and then solving for x, what I've shown is, is that every image, right, pick a y, will give me back a pre-image that'll be showing up inside of the real numbers. Okay, so in this case, there are this tells me the range is all real numbers. Or just R. We can actually just write it as R. Okay. So 
if I wanted to kind of define or, or talk about this function, how I talk about this function is I would say f maps r onto r, okay, and its range is all of r. And that's this range. Let's take a look at another example. Let's take a look at this example, f of x equals x squared. Now, for this mapping, we've used this mapping a lot. Many of you may recognize it as a parabola. And so an f will go from the real numbers, r, onto the real numbers. That is, is that we'll put in real numbers and we'll get out real numbers. Okay? And if we imagine, we we'll say, for example, we'll start out. Take, for example, f of 1. f of 1 will equal 1 squared, and so that'll equal 1. All right? So what we're going to get there is we're going to get 1 maps onto 1 f of negative 1 will equal negative 1 squared, and that will also be 1, because what we're going to do is take negative 1 times negative 1, so negative 1 also maps to 1. Well, that's interesting. Okay. Let's take f of 0.5. f of 0.5 will equal 0.5 squared, which will equal 0.25. So 0.5 will map to 0.25. Then f of negative 0.5 will equal negative 0.5 squared, which will also equal 0.25. And so consequently, negative 0.5 also maps to 0.25. So this is a little bit different from the last one. In the last one, what we had was, if we notice, we can go back up here and look at it, what we had was we had each element that we selected, 1 would map only to 10, 0 would map to 7, 1 half mapped to 8 and a half, negative 5 mapped to negative 8, and we didn't end up having two values mapped to a single value in our um, codomain. So like these members of our domain, these two members of our domain, they map to the same member of the codomain. Okay, and so let's imagine what that looks like. Here we go. Here's R, that's my domain. And here's f, my function, f of x equals x squared, okay? And I have r again. Now, if I take 1, 1 will map to 1. But I also know that negative 1 also maps to 1. I have 0. 0.5 will map to 0. 0.25. And negative 0. 0.5 will map to also to 0. 0.25, okay? The reason why this is so important that we recognize this about this function is that it changes what's going to end up becoming our range, and it even asks, it asks us to ask questions about what might, in fact, be our codomain, or excuse me, about what might be the restrictions on our domain. Okay, let's take a look at those questions. Let's first take a look at the question of, are there any restrictions on the domain? Well, if we look at this, here's our function f of x equals x squared, okay? Any real value, any number in R can be squared. So there are no restrictions on the domain. On the other hand, what is the range? So now let's we're looking at f, again at f of x equals x squared. And our intuition tells us that if I square any number, it's going to end up being positive. And so consequently, what we're looking at for our range, call it r, is going to be the set of all y belonging to r, okay, such that y is greater than or equal to 0. Right? Or we might even call it f of x. Maybe we'll call it that. We'll call it f of x instead.
and we're greater than or equal to zero. Now, how would we go about proving that? Well, let's let our f of x equal y. So y equals x squared, okay? And what we'll do is we're gonna then take the square root of both sides. So we're gonna end up with the plus or minus the square root of y equals x, right? Now the problem, the problem is if y is negative, then square root of y is imaginary. But x belongs to the real numbers. So that's a problem. Since x belongs to the real numbers, we can't have root y being imaginary, so y must be non-negative. It could be zero, that's one of the things, so it must be non-negative. And that's our reasoning, and so consequently, it confirms for us that we are looking at our range being the set of all non-negative values in the real numbers. Okay, so let's actually construct a picture that might actually show that. So we've got here, okay. On the one hand, we have the real numbers here, and we have our codomain of the real numbers, okay. We have our function f that maps, but it's only going to map onto the set, we'll call it uh, the set f of x, such that f of x is greater than or equal to zero, okay? The non-negative real numbers. So in this case, what we're seeing is, is that our range and our codomain are not actually equaling to each other. And this is gonna become a very key fact later on inside of the, uh, inside of the section. All right, that concludes our, uh, our overview of functions. Right, we have some key terms here, so let's go back and kind of review some of them, talk about them. On the one hand, we've got this idea of a function, which is a mapping or a transformation that takes elements in one set A to another set in B. Okay, the elements that we have in A, okay, are mapping over to other elements in B. B are called the images of the elements A, and this should be little a. Okay, and the pre-image of B is the thing that maps to B, okay? Inside of our codomain is this thing called the range, and the range is the set of all images of A. So you take anything that's in A, and you map it over here into B, and that set of all those images is the range. And so it's important for us to remember that the range and the codomain may not actually be the same thing. We actually might just have a subset, like in the example of f of x equals x squared. All right, that's it. That's all the news fit print.